Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In today's training tutorial, I will demonstrate how to extract a tooth from the STL model. This is a technique that Dr. Corey Glenn presented in one of his webinar presentations. I'll demonstrate a few different techniques, but we're going to start with the technique that Corey presented. So I've imported the CT scan and I've aligned my intraoral scan model to the CT scan. What I've also done is I went over to my segmentation panel I clicked automatic tooth segmentation and clicked create STL surfaces for all teeth. It's a single click and after it runs for around a minute or so, then you will have each tooth segmented as an STL file. This functionality is free and will continue to be free in the Blue Sky Plan software. So now I have my original model that I've imported, I have my CT teeth segmented, and I have my original CT scan. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the model as well to add some density and uh, thickness to the intraoral scan. So I'm going to select the relevant model, go over to my model manipulation panel. And if you're missing any of the panels I'm mentioning, you don't have them open, no worries. Just go over to our panels uh, menu and select the relevant panel or go over to this button in the horizontal toolbar and select the relevant panel. So I'm going to operate my model manipulation panel for right now, confirm the correct model is selected, and then click close model. Now the technique that Corey presented is fantastic because it extracts the tooth and it leaves us with the actual emergence profile. So go ahead and click on the menu right here to switch from model to crown and bridge. We're going to be using the Boolean functionality that's found in the Crown and Bridge module. So that's what we're doing right now. And then click on Teeth Edit Panel. And here we could see the Boolean operations. You might have it collapsed like that. Just click on it and open it up. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a subtraction. We're going to be doing a difference between our closed model that we just created and between, I click the plus here, one of our teeth. Select Let's uh, select the tooth and we could increase the offset a little bit and what this will do is just if there's any variance between tooth segmented from the CT scan and the actual model, then it will remove material from the model with a little bit of an offset. So if you want to keep that zero, you keep that zero or I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'll make it to 0.3 and I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Okay, now we have another new surface. If we switch over the teeth surfaces and scroll down, we could see our new new surface. And if I wouldn't have done the offset, that would have been fine. We would have been left with a few maybe floating pieces of the model if there wasn't a completely 100% alignment between extracted CT scan tooth and the model itself. But this is actually quite a clean uh, extraction and we have some extra pieces as I mentioned, and we'll go ahead and clip those away simply by switching back to where we were previously, which is our model master module. Here we could select the relevant surface. Let's make the 3D view much larger. And then I'm just gonna use the cut tool that we have on the bottom, activate it, hold down my shift key, and just draw a lasso with my left mouse button and just remove anything that we want to remove. Now, if you don't turn off the functionality and use your left mouse button again, it's going to create another lasso. So you could turn off the lasso functionality or the cut functionality simply by clicking the cut button again or by pressing escape on your keyboard. Okay, so now we have extracted a tooth and we can see we have the emergence profile as well. Okay, so that was Dr. Corey Glenn's technique. Another technique that we've had in the software probably the longest is just by using the cut lasso tool. And it's a good idea in general to use it from the lingual side to the buccal side to make sure there's no other surfaces behind the model that gets uh, cut accidentally. So I'm going to go ahead and do this simply by clicking cut, holding down the shift key, and just carefully lassoing around the area that I want to extract. Okay, and we could see it wasn't done perfectly. I could redo it a little bit better. I'm going to click Escape to turn off the cut. And here is our extraction. Now we have tools. If you go to Model Editing, we have a smoothing brush. So, for example, if you have this type of situation, you want to smooth it out, 
and just click smoothing brush. Okay, currently selected model is invisible. Do you want to continue? So I'm going to close this and what this is telling me is that I have one model visible and I have another model selected. So it's always important to confirm that you have the correct model selected so that you're operating and cutting on the correct model. There we go. And I'll click smoothing brush and hold down the shift key, left mouse button, and I could just go ahead and smooth out any of the area that I want to smooth out here. Okay, so that's our second technique for extracting a tooth. And the third and last technique that I'll be presenting is just by using a selection brush. So again, confirm that you're operating on the correct uh, model. Click selection brush. And with your left mouse button, just go ahead and paint the tooth that you want to extract. So we have the diameter slider right here. You could also, while you're holding down shift key and left clicking to paint, you could use the wheel of your mouse and just make the tool larger by scrolling the wheel of your mouse. And then you could paint with broader strokes. Okay, go ahead and do the other side as well. Let's make the tool smaller with the wheel of our mouse. Okay, and for our purposes now, let's say that that's okay. We could spend a little more time if we want to do it a little bit more exactly. And then click Cut Selected Area. And now we've extracted our tooth, but we have a big hole. So we could click Select Holes Manually, and then just left click on the border to select it. In our situation, since we only had one hole or for closing all relevant holes, then we could click Select All Holes. And then we click close either selected holes or close all holes. Let's click close selected holes. And now we've closed that hole. Okay, and we'll end with a tip that I don't think too many people know about. But if we go ahead here, let's turn on for a second view 3D cross section projection. And we could scroll using our tangential view over here and we could get to the relevant area of the extraction. We want to make sure in surfaces that we have the hint outline active. And now what we could do is go back and click on move outlines. And then in the 2D view, use your shift and left mouse button to simply grab the border of the outline of the model and drag it. And we could see the effect that it's having on the model. Let me just turn this off so we have better visibility, 3D. Okay, and I'm going to undo it and redo it. So you can see the effect that as we dragged the outline downwards, the effect that it had on our 3D model. Okay, so these are several different uh, techniques you could use, different situations. You might find one more appropriate or beneficial than another. And the main pointers that we have here is always confirm that you're operating on the correct model. Always confirm that you have the correct model selected from the drop down view. And in surfaces as well, it's always a good idea to just double click on the name of the model and give it a meaningful name so you can keep track of which surfaces is which.